Hey everybody, it's Ryan from Pi Records, and I'm here with two of the Pacific Northwest's founders of the Surf by Surf West <laughs> Festival, and they're having Surf by Surf West three this year, end of July. How you doing, guys? So good, Ryan. Great, Ryan. Um, it's a pleasure to have have you uh, on the show. Uh, first, introduce yourselves and uh, tell me a little bit about the show, uh, just the bands to start with. Uh, I'm Tom Head, also known as Carmen Gia. Um, I'm a DJ, music promoter, designer, illustrator, and uh, a, a big, uh, like you, a big surf fan who uh, basically just started... Uh, 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 booking bands because nobody else was doing that. So uh, we're, uh, we're celebrating our uh, third Surf by Surf West that uh, kind of happened uh, organically out of uh, the kind of the surf uh, guitar convention. And both uh, Tien and I are buddies of uh, Big Tiki Dude. And we started talking about sharing bands and lo and behold, here we are. That's awesome. Tian, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. So my name's Tian. Uh, I'm also on Facebook. It's Guitar Noir. I'm a guy who kind of puts the events. But yeah, I'm just basically just a huge surf music fan. I met Tom randomly 2013, 2014, when he put on this big surf show at Daryl's Tavern for his wife's retirement party. And then that's when I realized, oh my God, this guy's putting on surf shows. And then I, I didn't even know him at that time. The next time I saw him, we just stopped talking and became friends. And um, yeah, he's been, uh, he started uh, the Surf Guitar 101. I mean, not, not Guitar Guitar, but Surf by Surf West 1. And then he asked me to MC that show. And then since then, he and I have been working together to try to plan, organize the show. And it's, it's been awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so I, I'm very happy to meet you because um, I've been following, slowly getting to know uh, the Pacific Northwest. Uh, all the way from Portland to Seattle, um, the scenes there, and uh, you got bands like the Destroyers, who are who are great, uh, the Boss Martians. Tell me uh, some of the bands that are going to be there, and where the where uh, the Seattle based bands. Tan, I'm going to let you. Uh, Tan this year pretty much took the yoke of the. Uh, of the show, he, uh, he booked all the uh, the bands. He uh, did all of the uh, production work, and uh, all hail uh, Tian. <laughs> no, 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 it's a team project. Come on now. Um, but anyways, uh, talking about the band, so we'll start with the Seattle bands. Friday night we have a three band show. It's gonna be it's a pretty amazing lineup actually. The Boss Martians that you mentioned, they've been you know well known in the surf world since the nineteen nineties. They still put one of the best live shows you're ever going to see from any genre. They're the headliners. Um, the middle band, which is not Seattle, but super cool, they're coming out, are the Nebulas. They're from Rhode Island. Uh, it's the first time they'll be playing the West Coast in 20 years. So they wanted to make a mini tour of it. And they wanted to start in Seattle. And then they're going to work their way down California and hit, and hit uh, Super Guitar 101. So we're super happy, super stoked that they're playing. And then opening the band are the Evanstones. And I think you probably heard, you've been interviewing them before, but uh, yeah. yeah, they've been around, gosh, since 2012, 2013, something like that. And in 2020, they released probably one of the best trap surf sounding guitar band uh, albums you've heard, I've heard in a while, 1961. So yeah. Yeah. They're, they're great. Uh, they're actually having a, a revamped lineup with a new uh, rhythm guitarist, the new bassist. I happened to catch them last night. They sounded awesome. I think people are going to be really stoked to, to see that, that new lineup. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. I, I know uh, Jeff is going to be coming up because he really wants to see the Evanstones. Really? Uh, yeah. Boy, he, personally, we I, got a place for him to stay if he comes up. I promised him that. That would be awesome because I know Jeff wants to, but he's so busy doing the Peter shows, doing SG 101. Yeah, but yeah, it'd be great to have Jeff up here. Yeah, he uh, he said he, that, that's one of his hopes that he has enough time to do that. Very cool, very cool. Well, he was the inspiration for this show. And uh, both uh, Tian and I have been down to the uh, to the convention and uh, 
uh, you know, Jeff's uh, uh, a good mentor for all of us uh, booking surf shows. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, you spoke about the Evanstones, the Nebulas, the Boss Martians. There's tons more bands. Let's yeah, yeah. The other bands. yeah. Yeah. So that, that's Friday night. Saturday is going to be a pretty long but awesome day. Uh, doors at noon. Oh, by the way, uh, both days will be at Daryl's Tavern in Shrine. Uh, but yeah, doors at noon. And then the first band starts at one o'clock. And the first band is a treat because, you know, you, people think uh, the first band, there's probably some unknown band, somebody who's not very good, which can throw them at Thriller. Uh, you, everybody really should show up because basically the Woodhavens are uh, Mel, who used to play rhythm guitar for Evan Stones, Jeff, who used to play uh, bass for them, but now he's switching to drums, and then Jay, who plays bass uh, for them, but also used to back, uh, uh, be a backup uh, fill-in basis for, for Evanstones. So they're going to play some Evanstone tunes that, that Mel wrote for, for um, 1961, but they also wrote for their own songs. So it's going to be pretty amazing. I, th I think it might be their first show, live gig as a band. So wow. it'll be pretty, pretty, pretty special. Yeah. It's a pretty big deal for a first show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping people show up for the uh, uh, early to catch it, because it's going to be a pretty, pretty cool de debut. So, uh, so that's the second night, right? Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Tell me about the, the the main event. So that's basically it. So Friday night is the is that three band show. Saturday is basically 10, 10 bands starting at one o'clock with the Woodhavens, and I I can go through some of the lineup. So after the Woodhavens, we get uh, a super cool band, uh, Bonsai Surf. It's basically three three dudes. They play a lot of covers, but man, they are so tight. Uh, it's just amazing. And they also have a cool video sh uh, show that they play in the background. Been around probably again, 2012, 2013. So veterans of the, of the scene. And then the third band is a fairly new band that's been around probably 2017, 2018 or 2019, somewhere around there. The Murti Men. They, they're, they def they're definitely a different sound. Um, they're surf, but it's more of a dark, brooding, moody type of surf. But super cool, and they played a, a, a set, God, like a month ago at Daryl's with a bunch of new songs that have a lot of influence that aren't necessarily served, but makes it, so it keeps it interesting. Um, and they ended their set with uh, uh, Dead Kennedys, uh, Holiday in Cambodia, so you know they're great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, they, East Bay Ray, man, he's, uh, he's so strange to reverb. Right, yeah. and he's, surprisingly, he actually is a real surf music fan. Which is super yeah, cool. I, oh, I totally get it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's so, re really cool. So, yeah, so after um, Murty Man, we have, who do we have next? I'm drawing a blank. Uh, oh, <laughs> Plank. Plank. Um, these guys, they have an interesting story. They were basically active from like about 1998 to about 2000. Then they all got busy doing other projects and they came back and reformed probably like three, four years ago. And they, you know how in the surf music scene, there's some purists and then others who call surf music surf rock. And there's always that tension between the two camps. Yeah. If I had to say anything, they're more in the surf rock, but they're like more of a growly, mean sounding surf rock. But it's cool because the cool thing about this is you're not going to get bored because you're not going to have the same band playing the same sound every time. You're gonna yeah. see a lot of variety, and that that band is definitely of the kind where you won't necessarily hear normally at a surf music festival. And oh. and they have they have Eddie on drums. Yes, <laughs> who, who is he's got the best rock face of anybody I know, and he <laughs> has the most fun. And uh, they're uh, they're a great band to see live. They really are. They, agreed, agreed. They have a great presence, stage attitude that you know most bands would kill to have. Yeah, totally. Um, so um, another band that's on there is the Del Destroyers, which kind of is is a I don't know if it was a happy accident or planned that their new album, new video, and and uh, all their new stuff there they really started getting going um, uh, since the pandemic, and it kind of lines up with your show. Yeah. So I wish we could take credit for being that brilliant and forward thinking. <laughs> Pure dumb luck. <laughs> no, you, I, I'm sure, I, you interviewed them, so you know that they were. Yeah. They started the, the album 
on uh, 2019 into 2020, the plan was to, you know, get it all done and go do heavy touring. And of course, the pandemic hits, everything gets locked down. Yeah. And so it was delayed. They went back to finish recording and it just worked out where that they decided, you know what, we're going to finish it, release it, and then do, uh, be, be, you know, uh, deal with it because um, it didn't quite work out the way they wanted, but it worked out timing wise for us that they happened to release it at the same time. So yeah, they're actually our headliners. They had their album release uh, party last Saturday, played a great set. They're going to be playing a lot of shows this summer, and then they're going to be closing out the the our Surf by Surf West event this Saturday night. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So um, tell me the actual dates for the people watching uh, of, of the show, uh, the dates and times. So we got uh, Friday night, six, uh, 722 is, uh, is uh, the first night at Daryl's Tavern. And uh, doors open at, uh, or uh, the, the first band comes on at eight. It's funny, uh, Ryan, uh, a lot of our shows have uh, switched from nine o'clock starting times to eight o'clock starting times here in Seattle. Not exactly sure why, but uh, <laughs> it, it's great for all of us older, go, uh, older guys. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I can, I can really appreciate that. And then the next day, uh, 723 is uh, uh, doors open at noon at Daryl's Tavern. He's uh, at uh, 180, 18040 Aurora Avenue North in Shoreline, which is a suburb of Seattle. Lots of parking. The cool thing about the, the Daryl's Tavern and our host, Dan Dickman, is, is uh, he's just been fabulous to work with. He, uh, he built an outdoor stage. Uh, we're literally having bands go back and forth between out and in. So... They have time to change all their gear out. And, uh, uh, you know, that whole thing worked out so well before. And uh, again, Dan is such a great partner. He, he's, uh, he's got two different sound systems, an indoor and an outdoor. He always hires the best sound guys there are. And uh, uh, Daryl's Tavern is the best dive bar in Seattle. So it's always a good time with his, uh, at his place. Awesome, awesome. So tell me a little bit about the history. You, you, in a nutshell, you said nobody else was doing it, but your love for surf music uh, brought, brought you, you to do it. Where did you get the idea to team up and, and kind of pool your resources? Well, yeah, I, I will tell you, I, I, uh, I, I met Dan, Dan, the owner of Gerald's, because I've spent so much time sitting in his bar watching music, <laughs> and, uh, and it's the same with Ken, and uh, we made buddies with him, and uh, I started putting on an anniversary show for uh, my wife and I, and uh, they got pretty damn popular. We had some really great bands, uh, Florence and the Pool Boys have been up. Uh, oh. We've had Satan's Pilgrims play. Um, uh, we've had, uh, you know, uh, the Tomorrow Man came up. So we've had some uh, really good bands play. And uh, basically every time I, I uh, had a show, uh, there'd be this guy standing up at the front of the, uh, right on top of the stage with a beer in his hand. And uh, that was 10. And pretty <laughs> soon we became we became close buddies and uh, it was a natural partnership to uh, join forces uh, to do this kind of uh, thing. So historically I've seen a lot of live music and so has Tian and we know what we like. And uh, we have a friend that has a bar and we uh, leverage that uh, access as much as we can. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So. What can people expect when they come um, to the show, uh, the shows? Um, I'm, I'm sure it's more than just the music. It's the community. It's a cultural thing. What can, in your own words, each of you, what can they expect? 
Well, uh, again, uh, Dan, uh, the Daryl's Tavern is a uh, the best dive bar in Seattle. So uh, they've got it's got a great vibe to it. You got carpet on the walls, Ryan. Uh, it, it's you know nothing has changed in that place since '66. <laughs> their uh, their motto is uh, the place your dad used to drink, and <laughs> so uh, besides having just a great sound system and great sound people, uh, the people that are in Darrow's not only the fans but uh, the staff uh, they they bend over backwards for us so. Uh, when you come into Daryl's, uh, it smells like a gym. Uh, it's been well worn, and uh, they're all smiling faces. And uh, uh, it, it's just a, it's a great vibe for surf music. Excellent. Uh, how about you, Tim? What's your point of view? Yeah, so I I don't have much more to add than what Tom Tom was very uh, well spoken about that. I, I, and I, the thing I would add is like, it's one of those places where, you know, sometimes you go to, to bars to see bands <clears throat> and it's not quite as fun because everybody's trying to be so hip, but Daryl's is very laid back. Everybody's just there to ha hang out, have a good time. And there's no image, there's no attitude at all. It's just very natural. Um, it's small dive bar. So you can actually get up close and see the bands, experience the bands, hear them um it's just an incredible uh venue i think for just seeing live music and for that show it's gonna be pretty cool because going back and forth between indoor and outdoor stage is nice because it cuts down on the waiting time between the, the turnover as you can probably guess fans can hang out out outdoors or indoors if they want they don't always have to follow each band, each show if they don't want to but you can still hear it um they're gonna be serving lots of cold beer as usual um uh, stiff drinks that are tasty um, and if we can we're gonna try to have a food truck there it's kind of iffy because it's, it's difficult sometimes to get a food truck to commit to it but i think dan's still working on it and yeah it's gonna be a good time awesome awesome let's uh before we sign off i want to know a little bit about your backgrounds uh uh tom it looks like you're almost in a in a radio studio I, I'm 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 sure it's not, but I'm sure you would feel at home on the radio. Well, it it uh, it is my uh, uh, radio setup. So I'm a uh, I'm a DJ uh, at uh, uh, KMGP LPFM Seattle. Uh, I have a show called Heads Up with your host Carmen Gia. I'm Carmen Gia. Uh, <laughs> that is that is my uh, nom de plume, I guess. I uh, it's also the name of a famous character in one of Mel Brooks's films, The uh, Producers. I also, uh, I, like I said, I've seen, well, uh, my first show was uh, Eric Burden and the Animals in 1966. Oh, and damn. I've seen a ton of live music since then. Uh, I got to see Elvis and Jim and uh, uh, all the other guys before they went off and killed themselves. And um, so I, uh, live music is where it's at for me. And uh, uh, when I'm not doing live music, I'm reviewing and playing music on my radio show. It's on uh, nine o'clock Pacific Standard Time uh, every Saturday evening. So I'll have a show tonight. And uh, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm just a big fan who happened to fall into all of this, Ryan, just like you. Uh, I just, uh, it, no, uh, nobody, nobody had a show here in town. I was asked and I said, yes. And it basically the same with all the live music. I had access to, uh, to a great venue and, uh, Dan loves us because we bring in lots of, um, thirsty adults Heavy drinkers. <laughs> and, uh -huh. uh, and we, we fill, we fill the place up and everybody's, uh, uh, really happy, including the bands. One of the best thing about Dan is he splits the mute, uh, the the door with the bands. He doesn't take any of that. So everybody loves to play at Daryl's, and also just like Tan was saying, they have a six inch riser stage, six inches. So Tan is famous 
for standing right in front of the lead guitar all with the time. A, with <laughs> <a beer. laughs> and, and so and so it's it's just uh, it's our happy place it truly is excellent excellent tiana um uh, historically what have you been most known for ah uh, <laughs> going to your last shows uh yeah no i mean i'm just seriously i'm not even sure I'm worthy to be on this interview because I'm basically just a huge music fan who's gotten lucky to be able to put on some some, some, some cool shows uh, and working with Tom. But yeah, no, I, I do my best to like show go to a lot of surf music shows. I record a lot of videos to make sure we have we 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 save them posterity and go back 10, 15 years later and say, yeah, that band kicked ass, and here's some evidence of that. So yeah, that's basically what I like to do. I I go to a lot of shows. Uh, you know, I, I travel to uh, other cities to see music because. You know, sometimes you can't get all the bands to come to, Se to Seattle. Yeah. And then, I, like I said, I try to record as many videos as I can just because I think that some of these bands are really amazing and it's unfortunate nobody gets to see them because they're not in the same area. And hopefully if we have more videos out there, people might get turned on and say, hey, I might actually buy that stuff. And hey, I might go see them when they come to town. So, yeah. I love so that idea uh, that, that you're documenting that because that's part of what I do. Um, and so I can really respect uh, what you're doing right there. It's super fun, and, too, obviously. And, and I will tell you, we uh, we really uh, uh, respect and are grateful that you asked us to uh, to be on today. Uh, we know how busy you are. Uh, I went on uh, YouTube this morning to look at a few of your shows, and uh, they were never ending. And I, yeah. uh, you're very prolific. You're very well spoken, and wow. uh, you you are doing this for posterity, and uh, we love that. Yeah, I, I um, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I great I, stuff. Um, well, I uh, think I don't often mention is one day I was sitting around saying, uh, my wife and I don't like usually the same music. And I said, I just want to, I, I just want to talk about music. You know, that's all I want to do. I don't want to talk mm -hmm. about anything else. I don't want to talk about TV. And, and she said, well, why don't you go out and see a show? And I'm like, oh, but there's at that time there was COVID. And, <laughs> and so I was like, uh, well, I, I want to, I want to, I started off with my favorite musicians, which was from the descendants and all the singers. So I, I got all the singers from all and then people started watching those and I started to really get into it and Johnny Johnny Fink from Missing Fink Records really got me open my eyes to the new surf scene about two or three years ago nice and uh so I just started hitting up all the bands and I just found people in the surf community have uh really you know allowed me in 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 a certain way to to talk to them and and i just get to talk about music which is uh pretty much all i do i have a guitar back here my record players right there uh my amp <laughs> like like nice. my, my record collections over there i just uh i just surround myself in it and uh i don't i i can't get enough of it um so that's my reason. Like I, I just want to talk about it, and I appreciate yeah. I appreciate you guys uh, coming on uh, because people need like people like you. Bands need people like you to put shows on, and it's really important that you you are recognized for that as well as as Jeff and and Lorenzo um, because. The more no noticed you get, the more chance you get more bands, you get more people. Mm -hmm. I, I just think uh, promoters are often in the back, in the back, and uh, I think it's important. It's important that we get uh, people some eyes on you guys. Cool, and we appreciate it. Thank, uh, thank you so much, guys. I really enjoyed talking to you. Uh, good luck with the show. Um, this will be up Thursday this week and, uh, I'll keep, uh, I'll keep helping promote in any way I can.
Hey, also, hey, hey Ryan, you, how many do you have? A few minutes left. There's a few bands I want to highlight also for the show. For the oh, show. sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So before we go ahead and sign off, I also want to let you know the Viking Surfers are playing. They're pretty awesome. It's a three piece. It's they mostly play uh, well half of the set is usually like uh, Norwegian surf, uh, uh, folk songs that they kind of um, uh, transfer uh, transfer into surf tunes. Then they do covers of punk bands that you just uh, and they have new originals. It's a really fun uh, fun band to go see. Another Super band you're gonna see there, the Cosmic Rays. They're from Everett. They've been around God five six years probably, and it's like. Um, they, they started off being primarily a Link Ray cover band, or they emphasize that. They still do some Link Ray covers, but now it's all over the place. They, do, they will add some uh, tiki type songs, lounge songs, surf songs, and it's just a really fun mix of mostly original songs I mean, and some Link Ray covers, obviously. Cool stuff. Um, another band that's really awesome uh, from Boise, Idaho, the Seatopians. They actually oh, played, yeah. Uh, yeah, they actually for, played our Surf by Surf West the first year, 2019. And then COVID hit, and then last and 2021, they couldn't do it for a couple of reasons, but they're coming back. They're gonna, and they were well received last, last, last time here. I'm sure they're gonna put another great show on. And then the last band we, that we haven't talked about, which I am super stoked about, Shever from Austin, Texas. Yes. My God, one of the best kind of like psychedelic, spaghetti Western ish kind of vibey band you're ever gonna hear. It's hard yes. to describe. It's great to record it, but seriously, show up, people. It's going to blow your mind. And the best band name ever. Right? Yeah. Hey. Yep. You don't get it at first until after you see them. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tian and Tom. Um, best of luck. Always keep in touch. Um, you know, I'm on, the, I'm on the East Coast. You guys are on the West Coast. We can always trade information. And uh, cross promote that would uh, that would give me no greater pleasure. Awesome! Thank you very much for your time, Ryan. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Ryan. See you, Chan. Yep. See ya.